Now there's a lot of words on this slide here, <laughs> but the main thing to, to notice is that we're going to talk about how to pick your indexes, how to write your queries to take advantage of the indexes, and then for those of you who are new to the whole topic, we'll also look at um, you know, what is an index, how does it work, and some important things about the, the physicality, the physicalness of indexes. So those are the big kind of bullet points as we go throughout this uh, slide deck to think about what is an index and how does it work at a physical level, um, how do we choose good indexes, and then, um, you know, so how do we choose good indexes, and then what do we do for um, our queries to make those queries work really well. Okay, so let me uh, take that little guy out. And uh, the, the basics to start with is that we have tables in SQL Server. Tables are where we store data. And within the, um, the storing of the data, we are able to do things to make that data faster. And, uh, you know, it uh, is more accessible. And the primary means of doing that is a index. The funny thing about indexes, though, is that all data is stored on these pages. So here we have the leaf page. That's where the data is stored at the very lowest level. And they're 8K in size. And when you subtract out the overhead for the index allocation maps and the global allocation maps and the page header and page footer stuff, it's about 8064 bytes available for use as data. But then we also have our pages that are used for indexes. And those are also 8K. And um, so in a sense, when you think about a, an, an index that is created on top of the leaf level data, at the very, you know, the data that exists in the table, indexes are also tables in a sense, um, except that they contain pointers that get us to the data more quickly. So we have, um, uh, we have this root page, and that's the highest level of any indexing we might have if we've created a clustered index. The cluster index actually sorts the physical data as it's written on the disk. And so um, if we ask for this data in the clustered index, uh, again, it starts at the top level of the index and does a lookup, uh, finds the pointers that get us closest to it. So let's say we've got a, just a phone book that's our uh, table. And uh, so it goes to the top level where it's uh, you know A through K. And then on the other side of that uh, page is um, L through Z. And then it finds in this intermediate page a uh, uh, more direct map route, maybe just to the Ks, and then finally takes us directly to the data at the bottom level there. So those intermediate pages are pointers that get us to all the data that we might need at that lowest level. Now we compare, okay, just to flip back again, we compare the, the clustered index. That's the physical order the data is arranged on the, on the database, on the tables, that is, with, with out a uh, table without any kind of um, clustering. And that's, that's called a heap. And basically, a heap is like you're just pouring water into a glass. You don't actually specify where uh, certain parts of that water go. You can't tell, a, tell it, uh, hey, I'm going to put the, all the light blue water over here and all the Kool-Aid that's dark red over there. It just all goes into the glass. And uh, so a heap is a table without a clustered index. Now, it can have non-clustered indexes, but it would still be a heap, as long as it doesn't have that physical ordering that is provided by the, um, the clustered index. Also, all the records, as I mentioned, there's no ordering on those, and uh, there's not a double link list that comes with the ordering of the records in the clustered uh, index. So why am I even talking about it if it doesn't have the stuff? Aren't, aren't they useless then in that case? Well, actually, no, heaps actually do have some situations in which they can be really useful. The primary case where a heap is useful is when we need to load a lot of data in a one big load process, and we're starting from zero. So we've got an empty table. Maybe we're going to create that table. Um, for example, we've got an ETL server. And we're going to do some ex, you know, extract, transformation, and load of data. Maybe we've got a staging uh, database somewhere. And we need to load 30 million records as quickly as we can. You're actually going to be better served to have a heap and just load all of that data um, directly, serially, one record after the other, as quickly as the, as the system will go, and then create your indexes afterwards, including the clustered index. That will be faster than actually having a clustered index, maybe with some non-clustered indexes as well, 
and doing that same exact load. So I mentioned heaps because they do have their uses and they are actually uh, pretty good for certain use cases. However, as uh, the last couple notes there point out, um, they can be inefficient for most forms of transaction processing, inserting, updating, deleting, uh, even reads can be um, very problematic, particularly because anytime you need to get, like, let's say, a range of values out of that table, if you don't have a clustered index, uh, it's, your brain scans are probably going to wind up scanning the whole table. They can also, uh, heaps can also cause something called forwarded records. What happens is SQL Server has to create um, a 8-byte row identifier for every um, record inserted into the heap. And uh, let's say, for example, you, um, you alter, you, you know, you do an update statement on one of these records, and now it is so large that it doesn't fit on the page. Um, so what, uh, after that alteration, what it does is it'll write the rest of the, the data elsewhere, and, and it has to use this uh, row ID to kind of forward SQL Server onto the next part of the record to find that data. And so that can be an indication that you've got heaps set up in a way that are not very um, efficient and would be would benefit from a clustered index. There is, by the way, both a perfmon counter and uh, some other things you can look for. You could set a perfmon counter to look for forwarded records in your SQL Server. So that'll let you know if you have heaps that would really benefit from having a clustered index applied to them. Now, another thing that happens uh, in our SQL Server tables is something called page splits. What happens with um, in a situation like that is we have for SQL Server we have a situation where we have um, whenever we create an index um, or uh, whether that's uh, non-clustered or clustered, SQL Server will create every page in that index as 100% full. So that means it's going to fill up each of these different pages as it goes along. And you know, so you run that insert operation, or maybe you uh, create the table and, and do a select into, or you know, however you you build that out, um, it will add all of uh, those records in until each of those 8K data pages are full. And so that means there's no room left in each of these pages when you do additional inserts or updates or del well, not so much deletes, but uh, typically with inserts or updates and inserting new data. So what happens to the, uh, the SQL Server database when we need to, um, you know, what happens when we need to insert a record and we need to insert it right in the middle of a table that, uh, you know, of, of a data page? Excuse my scribble there. 